old. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to do a guide. We are about to do a guide of DM East with some lovely individuals. Some of them from the guild, some of them from the server. Are you ready to rock and roll? I think we can have some tunes on in the background. I'll keep the volume at a reasonable level so you can hear me talk. I'll be talking through the polls, what to look out for, things like that, which should also be helpful to the people in the party, I would guess. Are you ready to rock and roll? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bron Taffaton Mistrunner, a torn warrior of the Mistrunner tribe, and I am here in Dire Mall East to give you a tutorial on tanking this place. I've been in here a few times before. I'm going to be giving you directions, giving you some tips about the various pulls you could have. We're not doing a jump run this time, we're just doing a normal clear. We've got some great people. Jay Wiggles, a mage of our guild creation. We've got Crassus, the undead priest. He's going to be our healer. We've got Dark Vice, of clan dinosaurs in our guild. We've got Elmia, Dark Vice's succubus. And we've got a troll mage, Crooklyn, Croton of the Corrupted Church. Let's get ready to rock and roll. First step, getting your gear set up. Make sure you get your buffs. You can have some food or consumables if you want. Do whatever you have to. I'm just gonna put a sharpening stone on my sword. And then I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a weight stone on my Eskander's right claw. I'm gonna show you my spec real fast. Fury, all the way down. Protection. For defiance, shield block, and last stand. This is called Fury Prot. It's Fury Prot. Wow. I'm gonna make sure the mages and everybody has handed out water to the team. We're gonna get started here. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk to this guy. Do you wanna play a game, Stingy? Back here. Okay, so you just talk to this guy. And this guy is gonna be our way to get the key. We're gonna get the Crescent key here, which allows you to go into West and North. DM East is the first one you have to do to go into the other ones, unless you have a friend who already has the key. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna watch out for is the aggro radius on these huge trees. These guys have an aggro radius that's very similar to the Molten Giants and bosses in Molten Core. Their hitbox is massive, so it's a little bit deceptive when they'll actually engage. So we're just gonna make sure we pull these from a nice safe distance. One thing that I recommend doing is a one, two, three. You just hotkey the stuff. So I have F1 is skull, F2 is X, F3 is triangle and I will type it out in the chat for the team. But what we normally do is skull is first kill. So we're gonna build threat on that first. I'm gonna get a sunder or two. And then that's probably gonna be stuck to me. And then I'm gonna be using tab. Tab and then taunt and sunder on the other guys. Just try to make sure I have aggro on all three enemies. Some basic tank rotation stuff. You wanna be hitting bloodthirst every time just to increase your Rage generation. And I am Fury Prot here, which means I'm specced into dual wielding, but we want to be mindful of our healer. They're 57, not level 60, which means less uh, mana pool and regen and healing power than one of our MC geared tanks. So between all the pulls, I would just want to check real quick the mana of the healer. If you pull when the healer is at below half mana, that's generally a mistake, unless you have a healer who's very confident or it's a druid that has innervate up or something like that. I play with very few add-ons. I have details and then I put tiny threat on top of that. This you don't really use for dungeons too much. 
It's mainly for raid bosses so you can see who's second and third and whatnot in threat. If you did have a shaman in your group, you would not want to put a weight stone or sharpening stone on your main hand because you won't be able to get wind fury. So I'm just sitting in defensive stance. Warriors get plus 10% threat in defensive stance. And in addition to that, if you've specced into defiance, this increases the threat generated by attacks by 15% while in defensive stance. So it's not going to benefit you in battle or berserker stance. One, two, three, DPS order. And this guy has a pretty big aggro radius, so I'm gonna pull back a little bit, throw up a demo shout to reduce the incoming damage taken. And then I have a macro here for putting on a shield. So let's just challenging shout here. So I have aggro on everything. And now the team can AOE if they want to. They're gonna get one more guy. That extra die here pretty soon. Let's get a war stomp. They should be killing the skull and the X if they can. I'm gonna have shield block up every time. X is dead. Now this is the exciting pull territory, which is fun. Warlocks do not have a threat wipe. Mages with ice block can wipe their threat. That is another thing to be aware of as well, is who the highest threat dealers in your party are going to be. It matters more so than the highest damage dealers as a tank. Hunters can pretty much go all out. Their feign death is a super low cooldown, so you don't have to worry about them too much. Rogues can use feint and vanish, which is really nice. Fury warriors, a lot of people don't know this, but in Berserker stance, you deal 80% total threat. So just by being in Berserker Stance as a Fury Warrior ends up being really nice for not pulling aggro. If their gear is really good, say your DPS has better gear than you as the tank, then it is possible that you may still have some threat problems. Communication is really important as a tank. So if you just tell them to wait for a Sunder or two, that's usually nice. And then also for the the healers and the team in the chat communicating to the tank is good. This is a social game. Communication is a very, very important thing to work on. Tanking by default is a bit more of a leadership role than some of the other ones. You are standing in the front. Usually you want to be the one to make the pulls because whenever you make a pull, there's an aggro bias on the person who started it. So me going in first is nice. Charge Thunderclap Demo Shout is a pretty cool opener for these group pulls. It's not a ton of threat on all the mobs, but it reduces your incoming damage as a team pretty nicely. As a Tauren, you can throw out your War Stomps pretty regularly. And my perspective on pacing is you want to have a pace that your team can keep up with, which if it's a new group, generally you want to start out at a slower pace and then gradually ramp it up if they can keep up with that pace, rather than starting out too fast and people are making mistakes and then you get wipes and then you have to do ghost runs and it ends up adding a whole bunch of time. So a really key thing to be aware of as a tank is the steadiness of the run, not just the raw speed starting out. So we want to keep it nice and clean, nice and steady. That one pull earlier was a little bit messy. So I would say that was a little bit overly ambitious for a starting pull. I would not recommend that. But my gear is very above par for this. We've got Might set, we've got Wrath, stuff like that. Wrath Helm. There are some add-ons you can do like that show different colored health bars depending on if the units are attacking you or not. For me, I tend to roleplay a good bit when I play this game and having tons of stuff flying around on the screen kind of breaks the immersion and it also doesn't really give me that much more information that I need. You can put a target marker on this imp.
As Fury Prot, you have a bunch of decisions that other classes don't really have to make as much. Like, should I use Death Wish? Should I dual wield or have a shield and a main hand? Those kind of things are pretty tricky to figure out sometimes, so you could open up safe and just stay in defensive stance, not use Death Wish, and always have your shield active. You need to talk to this imp again to make progress on the key quest. The healer's less than half mana, so we're just gonna chill for a second. I don't have a health stone, so we could say nice warlock. Could I have a health stone, please? And I believe the warlock has soul stone or healer. Yes, 21 minutes. Fantastic. The add-on that I have that shows the cooldowns here is called Omni CC. You can find that through Twitch, the Twitch app, or I think the Curse app are the main ways people do that. Nice easy pulls. I really like the aesthetic of Dire Maul. It's pretty cool. It doesn't feel as cold and stuffy as a lot of the other instances. You've got a nice open air place, some elven ruins, if you want to know the lore. To give a pass at the different tanking abilities and what they do, Sunder Armor is kind of your go-to. I have a decent amount of rage and I want to build a decent amount of threat. Bloodthirst is a lot more expensive for rage. It's really good damage. If you look at my damage output, it's 15% of my damage right now, second only to my auto attack. Revenge is your budget threat ability. It's low on damage, but it's high on threat for its rage cost. Usually I'll open with, in this kind of circumstance, just tab sunder to make sure every unit has one sunder armor on it. And sometimes I'll go back to the skull, do this as the X. And then I just taunt anything that tries to run away from me. Shield Slam is a very nice ability if you're deep prot. It does a whole bunch of burst threat. If it crits, it does even more threat. It's also 20 rage compared to the 30 rage of Bloodthirst. So it's probably more rage efficient as an ability. I would highly recommend Deep Prot, especially if you're not super geared. Fury Prot requires a lot more hit rating to really come online and be strong. That's more of a thing to do later on. And communicating with your guild is good too because, and I kind of messed this up, if you go for Fury Prot, that increases your gear competition with your physical DPS classes. So depending on your guild's loot system and stuff like that, you I would probably recommend should communicate with your officers and leadership if you're going to be switching from Deep Prot to Fury Prot. Deep Prot is a lot less dependent on hit gear because you don't have an offhand and you're not as dependent on white hits for your threat. It's more about your active abilities, which show up as like an orange-yellow. Make sure you have your fine minerals or fine herbs or whatever. Detection up as you're going through. Taking a pass at the team's mana again. And I will charge. Oh, this isn't connected to those? Cool. You can really feel the difference in threat between battle stance and defensive stance. It's kind of alarming, especially when you have defiance. What? Oh, I got entangled by that. A good reminder too is battle shout. Battle shout, battle shout, battle shout. What on earth is battle shout? Battle shout is 241 attack power. I think it's more because I spec'd into that through the Fury Prot build here, so I have all five points. And in Battle Shout, 
But it is just so much damage for the rage cost. These guys do a AoE Shadow Bolt, which hurts pretty bad. We looked at the raid logs of our raids MC clears, and we have a mixture of veteran players and new players. And Battle Shout is up very inconsistently. There's a lot of visual noise in this game of different things that are happening, and it can be kind of hard sometimes to remember a two minute cooldown to keep up all the time. But if you're looking at your numbers, you can kind of get a sense for how hard you're hitting with or without Battle Shout. If I don't have it, I kind of just see those numbers come up and feel like there's a problem of some kind. You could also just continually look up here. But it helps a lot for threat if you're a tank. It does cause threat when you initially cast it, but then it also means that your threat output is higher for the rest of the fights because you're hitting harder. More damage is more threat. But there are some forms of threat that don't also deal damage, like Sunder Armor. Main example there. Being the first to pull also is threat without necessarily being damaged. You can shoot with your gun, but even just face pulling like that means that I have the aggro bias for the rest of the pull. I'm not sure how the succubus is pulling aggro more than the other characters. It's the kiss ability that's high threat. There's Lash of Pain, which is just a flat amount of damage. And then there's the kiss ability, which I think has some effect. One of the largest threat abilities in the game is Mind Blast. If you have a Shadow Priest or a Healer Priest who mixes in some Mind Blast, you want to be aware of that. You might even have to go as far as recommending that they don't open the pulls with that, because a Mind Blast is about a Sunder Armor and a half worth of threat. I think even non-crit is what it feels like. A good habit to get into is pulling and then going line of sight to get the casters to come all the way around to you. It organizes things really nicely, so as a tank you're not just trying to hold threat on stuff. Ideally you're also organizing the pulls in an elegant way so the team can take them out and get full value from their AoE. I think these are the AoE ones. Let's see if that's... okay. I was wondering if it was a frontal cone. AoE Shadow Bolt, or if it's just all directions. I think it's omnidirectional. So we're starting to get to know these mobs. Things like that can be dispelled. There are a variety of different effects that are casted on you in these dungeons. Some of them, you would just kind of take the effect, it's not that bad, wait till it's over, and the priest uses their mana for healing, but there are some that are so nasty that it is worth getting a dispel, and if your healer is not dispelling those, then you could ask for that. Usually I favor being nice and asking rather than yelling at people. Your reputation matters a lot, and with Classic WoW coming back, with local server identity, if you're shitty to people, then they're going to tell their friends. They'll be like, this person was an asshat. And then you'll be known as the asshat. And when people say they're looking for more and you say you want to go, they're going to say no. Or you could just place value on being a nice person, but that doesn't work for everybody. I'm going to talk to this guy again. This imp is the way that we get the crescent key. I'm kind of following him around. There are quite a few bosses in here. We don't need to chase him as the first part. We can also do the boss in here. 
random whiplashers running around. There's a boss up here we're going to go to next. Looking at mana. Healer has plenty. Mages can drink once we get up here. There are some stealth satyrs that walk around too. Be sure to check your projectiles before you get into an instance, your ammo. Pulling with a gun or a bow is pretty nice, just to keep things nice and clean. It takes five seconds to be nice. It really doesn't cost very much to be nice. You don't have to be, I know some people, they think it's cool to be tough or whatever, or that kind of thing. You can do that in a way that isn't obnoxious and overly abrasive. I played Han back in the day, so I'm fully aware of the excitement of a hyper-aggressive and toxic gaming community and how some people think that's cool and whatnot. The thing that I've shifted with as I've matured and grown and stuff is learning about some of the really terrible shit that some people have to endure. And I lived a very peaceful and kind of safe upbringing where I didn't experience a lot of bad stuff. There wasn't really trauma in my life. So for me, when people are all talking smack on online games and stuff, like that's the, the main thing that I'm boxing with and dealing with in life. So it's not really a big deal. But for someone who has a bunch of really tough personal stuff and they get a couple hours to play video games, for them to be hassled to no end is really awful. So I try to just be generally kind because I don't know everyone's backstory. I don't know how they're feeling today. And I would prefer to be a force of good in their experience rather than another person who's being evil and nasty. Games have been more and more a part of our life year by year. I remember when this game first came out, it was kind of uncool to be a gamer. Like you were like, ah, nerd, lol, playing WoW. So a lot of people, and when I was in high school, I just didn't tell that I played World of Warcraft. I hung with kind of a jock, jock prep, top of the class crowd of kids. And gaming wasn't really seen as a, a cool hobby or being skilled at games wasn't cool. Look at me now, I'm a full-time streamer, lol. Okay, we got the elf boss here. Pretty simple fight. Tank and spank. There is an ad, so I'll probably try to throw a Sunder on that. But we've got enough mana. Just go in. Not really too much to worry about here. Void bolts and stuff. Let's get a defensive stance. Torn so I can war stomp. Sunders and Sunders. This guy just casts fireballs. The boss dies quite fast. Four seconds on Battle Shout and we re up it. One of the stealth guys. I'll check my inventory. I have a decent bit of space. There are a few decisions with routes you can take here. We're going for a full clear here too, so it doesn't need to be 100% perfect which route you take. Doing a jump run is a different thing. A jump run you're hitting most of the bosses, but not all of them, with the objective of getting to the end as fast as you can. We're not doing that here. We do have some people who are not level 60, so for us to pull more stuff is good. Experience is getting everyone closer to 60. 
Usually you would be wanting to do a jump run if you have a team of all level 60s. Could do a guide on that at some point, maybe. If there's demand for it. I think there are ways that certain classes can do it with fewer people. I've done it with groups of three quite a bit. I think you can do Warrior Shaman if both people are really decked out in gear. We don't have a decurse in them. Oh, we have two mages. I think mages can decurse. Say decurse, please. Mages and druids can decurse. I don't think paladins can. Can paladins just remove everything? I've heard Paladins can even cleanse credit card debt. Student loan debt. Smooth, steady pulls. Priest is at about half. I've noticed I haven't really used Death Wish at all this run. It would squeeze a little bit more damage out, but it does come at a cost because you take additional damage, which means your healer has to spend more mana to heal you. Uh, is it worth it? Bit of a tough call. You do have some room for personality as a tank. They're more aggressive tanks and more defensive tanks. But it's good to be flexible across the board, in my opinion. Be able to adjust to your team. As a warrior, it is pretty difficult to keep AoE threat before you get Thunder Fury. Wait for the team to recover here a little bit. This boss, this guy does hit pretty hard. He's also confused about pathing. On a lot of these pulls, I prefer opening with Sunder Armor over Bloodthirst as Fury Prot because it's 30 rage for Bloodthirst, which means that if your DPS opens up right at the start of the pull, sometimes you lose aggro and would have to taunt it back, which is kind of annoying. Use Blood Rage, or sorry, Bloodthirst after I've gotten a few Sunders on it. Wave Slicer. Cool green axe. Seems like something to vendor. So we're going to go around here, I think, and there's another boss in this upper part. Again, the lovely thing about it. Doing a full clear is so we're just going to be fighting enemies for that yummy experience. Let's throw a death wish and see what happens. I have so many negative effects on me for this rupture. Let's use the health stone and last stand. I have a paralyzing poison. Which sucks. Yeah, it makes it tough to hold threat. We'll throw the challenging shot. Taunt on this guy. This arm is really nice. For reducing incoming damage, but you can disarm if you're stunned constantly, unfortunately. 
that guy's about to die, we'll disarm. And only this guy has daggers. I have a macro here that equips shield in addition to my main hand. And I do have shield wall as well. I can see my healer is totally out of mana. Shield block is a nice spell. Can block again. Yep, dealing threat is very difficult when you're stunned. Druids could remove that poison, as could shamans with their poison cleansing totem. We have priest, which means we can remove magic effects, but we cannot remove poison effects. There's a quest item, the Lufa, that allows you to remove bleeds. Some people like to keep that on them. I don't keep that on me normally. I have a lot of HP. 6k HP right now just with Fort. Can take a quick pass at the gear while we're waiting for res. Hit rating is a very good stat. Parry is also a good stat. Of the tank stats, parry is preferred to dodge. Defense is nice, armor is very good. Stamina is good, especially when you're getting hit by a bunch of burst damage. Mark of the Chosen is from a quest in Desolus. It's an incredibly good item if you're a main tank. Also just for dungeon tanking, it's good. It lasts for a minute and there's no cooldown on it, so it's up a lot of the time. And then Rune of the Guard Captain, this is from a quest chain in Hinterlands. It's one of the elite quests. Pretty much a must-have item for both. All right, we'll just say any physical class. This bow is from DM East. Hit rating is amazing. Agility is not bad. Drillboard disc is from MC. This is from Gar. Shikander's Right Claw is also from MC. Very nice item. Oops, I have Dark Iron Bracers. I forgot to equip my tanking bracers. Cool. These are also from MC. Team is healed up, raised up, and let's go. I also have Breastplate of Might. I have the Stone Skin Gargoyle Cape. Uh, this may not be the right way. This may not. to get the satyr boss so there's a big hallway with a tree and we ask the nice big tree to knock down the door so that we can advance but in order to be able to unlock that conversation we have to kill a satyr boss over here so we just fought the water guy there now we're gonna go across and fight the satyr boss this guy is the guy who drops the satyr's bow Which is a heckin' good item. Item rack is a nice add-on to keep and track and swap sets with. That's a good recommendation. Uh, we may have to pull that. We have people who are below level 60. We can try to squeeze by. It's kind of a test. Nice. to have our bags full. All right, Seder boss area. Make sure everyone is here. Got the team. Charge, Thunderclap, Demo Shout, War Stomp. Torin style. Focusing your threat output on the elite mob is usually better than all the small guys. Tend not to hit quite as hard, but as you can see, they do a decent bit of damage if the class gets aggro on all of them. 
Okay, so this guy will sacrifice one party member, puts them on this little tomb thing, is this altar. And they take quite a bit of damage, so they're gonna need a lot of healing. Funnily enough, he will also sacrifice a totem sometimes. And the totem takes no damage. So whatever that's about. If you're a shaman, put some totems down. Maybe the Wind Fury totem will take one for the team. If your taunt's on cooldown, you can do it Mocking Blow. A clever hat. Excellent. And we can just jump off here. And that was the route we took going up. Let's see if the team is paying attention. Over this way. Over this way, sir. Huh? This way. Make sure not to let people fall behind and get lost. That can sometimes cost a whole bunch of time. Slow and steady. Okay, now we go this way. Uh, no, it's this way. So we came in through this one and we crossed directly over and got the Seder boss. We fought this water boss and now we're gonna hug this left wall go up and then we're going to talk to the tree tell him to knock down the door and then it's pretty straightforward from there there's also the imp which we may revisit later on this area is very dangerous if you have a veteran group who knows how to jump run they're going to be able to weave through these packs we have a bunch of people who aren't level 60 so we're not going to risk that, we're just going to play it safe. Pull the stuff, get the experience, make sure we don't wipe. This is the nice tree that we talked to. Just going to pull these. These ones you do want to focus DPS because they cast a regrowth. I'll pull it back. Make sure we don't get any other ones. Let's get a war stomp. I'm gonna get a sunder on triangle and then X. Do a stun, which is kind of a pain. Interrupts can be good. I have a shield bash macro where it equips my shield and then casts shield bash. It's pretty simple to write these. I'll show you that macros shield bash. Equip drill bore disc, equip Ishkander's right claw. That's my main hand weapon slash cast shield bash. There's also some show tooltip stuff you can write into there as well. Mana bars look good, I'm gonna keep pulling. I'm gonna throw a battle shout and then a demo shout. Battle stance. I'm gonna thunderclap as well. Ooh, they all died. Nice neat pull. Trying to watch our sides. It'll be tough to see stuff with all the trees and this big tree here. Excuse me, sir. Would you please open the door? As you wish. And there he goes. We're not going to follow him super close because we want to make sure we don't get attacked by these guys. We could skip that one if the team goes. Let's not. Let's not do that. Stomp to interrupt that nice. 
Since the skull was kind of low, I just taunted it and then immediately switched off to the X. Taunt forces the target to attack you. For what? Feels like around five seconds. So if you think the unit is going to die within that time frame, then you can just taunt it and then focus on something else. You'd be wasting your threat output that you could apply into something else that's not as focused on you and has more HP. We'll get this one next. Charge this one. Charge Thunderclap, Demo Shout, Battle Shout, Defensive Stance. Revenge on the skull, and then I'll get a Sunder, and now I'm going to switch one Sunder for each of the other ones. Get skull a little bit more. Okay, let's watch the cast bar up here, and then try to go for a shield bash. Pib. One, two, three. Okay, I don't have aggro on the skull and I'm stunned, so I'm going to focus on skull. You have some abilities as a warrior that mm, are useful in certain contexts, but not the most useful in others. Rend is the kind of skill that's going to up your damage, but not do anything for your threat. So depending on your group and how fast stuff is dying and how much threat is being dished out to everybody, you may not want to use that at all. For me as Fury Prot, it's pretty crap because I don't even have improved Rend for Impale. Impale is one of those really powerful warrior talents. It is in the arms tree here. It gives you, with both points in it, 20% increased damage on your crits from your abilities, which is awesome. And then you would get 45% plus damage to your Rend. Rend is a bleed effect which ignores armor, so casting it on shielded units, like the stuff in BRD, can sometimes be good. But generally, you would want to prioritize high threat abilities over that. Nice bow crit, 186. Captain A Click, thank you for the support. Any opinion on warrior tanking? I found it to be very clunky with stance dancing. You have lots of problems building AoE threat. Sounds like you should play a druid. I prefer warrior tanking strongly because it requires more button pushing. By trade, I am a StarCraft II GM Zerg streamer with like 300 to 400 APM. So for me to have to push more keyboard buttons to achieve an outcome is more exciting for me, more fun. So I would prefer that. But if you want a kind of one button AOE threat thing, as a Druid tank, you can just go in and hold down swipe or spam swipe. And it deals a lot of threat to three units at a time which makes it really easy to hold packs like this. And then the only other ability that you're casting very much is Maul, which is kind of like Heroic Strike. Thank you, Wookie Chicken. Warrior is a very gear dependent class as well. So if you don't have a ton of time or you don't really have friends to play with and you don't like forming dungeon groups yourself, it may not be the class for you. Druids have a ton of flexibility. You can tank heal or DPS a dungeon as most specs and get away with it just fine. Yeah, druids have really good threat. For raid tanking, warrior and druid are basically the only ways to go in classic. You could do paladin tanking for dungeons. They're actually very nice 
dungeon tanks, if your team is paying attention. Shaman tanks are one of those things that if you want to make that your hobby, you could try to go for that. But it's, it's a lot of effort for a very mediocre dungeon tank. You can just jump up on this thing. You have the Mario skills. I need the Mario theme being played right now to help. Okay, we're up here. I don't think it'll pull those big trees. We do have a level 55, I think. Yeah, we have a 55 mage. So this is a test here. I don't actually know. I haven't done this with a 55. We're hugging this inside ring, avoiding these tree guardians here. Cool. So now we can do these pulls. This is the last boss in here. We have not done the imp for the key yet. We could do that after. I think that's the main thing the mage needed. The fastest route may be to take this guy out and then just work our way out of the instance and then go back in and follow that hallway down. Assuming we didn't get respawns. Different dungeons have different speeds of respawns. Some of them are super fast. Other ones are not going to respawn for a couple hours. Gotta watch out for these trees. They can really surprise you with their threat radius. I think this guy was back here. So if you're arranged, probably staying on this ramp. Kind of where the mage and the priest are right now. Would be the way to go. Avoiding what is affectionately known as the ass pull. Where you can't see something, but there's something behind you that you back into. Whoops. Waiting for a little bit of warlock regen. And then I'll go. If you're new to the game, you may not know that casters cannot drink while in combat, but if they started drinking out of combat and combat was initiated, they can continue to drink. So in that case, the warlock was drinking, I could pull and they could still get a few more sips in of regen before standing up and fighting. In Burning Crusade and Wrath and the other expansions, they made a lot more classes viable for more of the roles. It's an interesting choice to make only Warrior and Druid the real viable tanks, but I think back in the day people didn't really consider Druid to be a viable tank in most circumstances. It was kind of Warrior or Bust. Rotation-wise, Warrior is one of the more difficult and involved classes. Some of the classes have a very simple rotation, such as use Shadow Bolt or use Frostbolt. But both the Fury DPS rotation, there's a Slam Spec rotation, and the Tank Warrior rotation have a, a good amount of variety to them. Bear tanking is very easy rotation-wise. Feral DPS as a cat is very high difficulty compared to the other classes. Okay. This boss changes forms. He hits pretty hard. He summons some adds, but that's about it. The bosses in here aren't super difficult. The main thing I think that is kind of a surprise is the aggro radius of those big trees. The poison effects and things are pretty strong. And then also just navigating and going the right way is key as well. This guy has this tree form. He can also turn into a wolf. Just gonna be more DPS. Looks like he's doing a knockback there. Mage brought it back. 
And I can throw out a challenging shout. Just to grab throat on everything. Maybe a war stomp. Cool. Got this. Druid quest item. This is... It's not BOP, so we can just greed that. Mana per five and stamina, we'll greed that. And then... Three arcane damage to the attacker. If you are just gearing out, this isn't that bad of an item. It's not that good of an item either. I would recommend Voon's Vice Grips. For your... Either DPS or tanking item starting out. Those little felvine shards are used for a quest or something later on. Not something I've messed with, really. And this is the best part for miners. You've got three rich thorium veins. And as the main tank, I am working my way up to a Thunder Fury. I have one of the bindings. This one is from Baron Geddon. I also need the binding from Gar. And 100 Arcanite to make the Elementium Ore. And these have arcane crystals that come out of them. Okay, looks like we do have another miner. I did not know that. I will let him have that one. And I'll go for the other one. Sometimes there are three, sometimes there are two. Looks like we got two this time. Yeah, bad luck. So we can zone out. Let's go. We're zoning out. This is going to get us back in. We're not going to reset here because we want as clear a path as we can have to get to the Crescent Key, which should allow one or all of them to be able to access DM North and DM East. I'm just going to go back around. Came out of this entrance here. And let's go back into DM East. This is a PvP server as well, so we want to be kind of vigilant. Could even just charge this guy. Let's go, let's go. Back into the fray. Not sure everyone is going to make it. How are we doing, team? Let's go. Let's go. Get in, get on, let's go. Okay. Now we're going in once again. And we are after the Crescent Key. Let's see what respawns there are. This is a patrol respawn, but the other stuff did not respawn, which is fantastic. Let's see if they all make it around the corner. Excellent. So we're just going to run around this and go back in there where I'm facing. And we're going to follow that hallway all the way down. And just fight this guy. It's only one unit, so I am going to throw the rend. Doing fancy pulls. Moving and fighting. Thanks for joining us on this journey through Dire Mall East. One of the more aesthetically pleasing dungeons, I think. What are some of your favorite dungeons? I really like BRD. I recently just invested about four and a half hours getting some fire enchants, fire resistance enchants for my fire res gear for Ragnaros tanking. So 
the uh, Helm of Might, I have 20 fire resistance on that. And then on my Flame Walker leg plates here, got 20 fire res on those. It is a joke and a half getting all the materials and completing all the quests for that. You have to do all the quest chain in Ungoro to be able to interact with the pylons. You have to have some black diamonds. You have to go into BRD and get a bunch of different things. It's a very confusing and slow moving process and there is a drop rate involved. You need some items from a vault and it has about a 43% chance to drop. So you're not guaranteed to get it, which is pretty silly. <laughs> I'm slowed by this poison and Crolton is being nice and walking along with me. Poison resistance potion? Sure. Thank you. Curative up to four poisons up to level 60. Huge. Put it on my bar. Yeah, BRD is really cool design-wise. The pulls are really fun as well. The tricky thing about some of the instances is the effects on stuff is so nasty that if you don't have the right dispel classes, it can be a big pain. That was one of the reasons why I didn't like Razor Fin Downs. There are diseases, curses, poisons, magic effects. And then it's kind of dreary. This one has a nice aesthetic. You've got lots of different plant stuff. Nice stonework. Look at all this overgrowth on the ruins. This is just growth. Keeping up that battle shout, throwing revenge. My sharpening stones and stuff did fall off. It's not really gonna make or break the rest of this instance. You could disarm guys like this. Disarm is one of the abilities that is probably not used as much as it should be. It's a very good PvP ability if you're in a fight against a melee class because most of the activatable abilities in the game involve having a main hand weapon equipped. An exception is actually Bloodthirst. Bloodthirst, I don't know what the mechanics of it are. Maybe you just bite the person. But you can be disarmed and still Bloodthirst for full value. Mortal Strike requires a weapon. Shield Slam requires a shield, but oh, I'm gonna use this poison removal elixir. Fantastic. Okay, the little imp guy is up here. Oh, no, here he is. So we talk to him and then he goes up. Die! Cool. Be careful. Priest has a little bit less than half mana. Oh, wait a second. He's meditating. There are four satyrs there. We could fight all of them. Some of them were kind of dicey though, so I'll just wait. Could pull back as well. If I charge pulled that, then that patrol will come back and probably aggro. So play it safe. Back it up, back it up. It's interesting it only pulled two. Throw a war stomp. Taunt and then go back to the other guy. Revenge. Bloodthirst. Plus blood rage. Some good damage. Keeping up that battle shot. Bam. OK. 
Okay, we'll get this guy and then we can go up the ramp. And we'll get the imp for the key and then we're done. I don't even know where those came from. Warlock using a clutch banish demon ability. Warlocks can banish demons and elementals. Banish is one of the strongest abilities in the game. It does make the unit damage immune though, it's not like sheep where you can just attack and break it, you have to wait. I can see a stealth guy here. We have detect greater invisibility from Warlock, which makes finding these guys a lot better. Running this instance, I think you should just expect to aggro one of those pretty regularly. Rank 1 Banish for the win, says Dark. Yeah, it's true. You can cast lower ranks of Banish for a lower duration on it, which is really convenient if you think that your team is going to not need the full duration of the long Banish. Ouch. These spores getting me. Okay, so... We talk to this guy again, and then now he's going to turn aggressive and large. That's a lot of damage. So I did use my last stand here so the healer can get on top of it. There are some guys running around, so I'm going to throw a challenging shout. And I can also equip this, and I can shield wall if I want to. Throw some taunts. Through my war stomp. These ones started out at a different spot than me, so we do have aggro all over the place. I want to make sure the healer is not getting hit so they don't get the pushback. I killed the imp, huzzah. Let's make sure we save the healer so it can res. And we got him. Just got three people fighting our way through it. Bloodthirst does restore some health whenever you attack, so every little bit counts. That shield block. This is a decent situation to throw some rend if there's a full HP one or something close to that because we lost two of our DPS. All right. Get a res. It's a cooking recipe. I don't have cooking at all, so I'll just pass. I think this guy has the crescent key. I can't loot it because I already have it. It looks like this. Yep, it's a 100% drop rate off of this guy. Fantastic. Priest got it. Look at the mages and everyone else can pick it up. Give people a crisp high five, and that is Dire Mall East. We hope you enjoyed this uh, instructional video with Brunt Aferton Mistrunner. Dungeon tanking guides. Do you do dungeons? Are you a tank? Do you need help? Look no further than these guides. Pretty soon we're also going to work on a molten core tanking guide as a main tank. How exciting is that? <laughs>